And um, we were talking about conventional concrete design when it comes to shear strength. And um, this is going to be the concrete strength, VC, and the seed strength is going to be VS. In case of that you don't have any ties, this is going to vanish here from this equation. And your V factor is going to be usually say as 0.75. And the shear factor here is usually going to be 2 times square root of V prime C. And of course, we have the lambda factor. If you recall the lambda factor, the 0 0.75, 0 0.85, this is going to be for lightweight concrete. Also, it's going to be applicable to this equation. So uh, the VC usually is going to be 2 square root of V prime C, unless we have some pre stressing and we're expecting that this factor 2 is going to be slightly higher because this is going to be based on the interlock of the concrete particles themselves. So once you put compression on them, I'm expecting here to have more shear resistance. And this equation is simple as gave you the cross section area of the section, right? The width times the depth, depth to the tension rebars because the cover we just disregarded. Now we need to think what's going to happen when we have PT. In this case, it's going to be D sub P. And this term two or this number two will need to change. But if we have ties, it's going to be almost the same equation. I mean, why the tie trends is going to get changed? is going to be equal to the cross-section area of the vertical reinforcing of the ties. If you have, let's say that you have two legs, it's going to be two times the cross-section area for one rebar, times the yield difference of it, times the depth. Again, in our case, it's going to be dp, divided by s, the spacing of, of the tie sets. And of course, we're going to have this maximum, a factor of eight, which means concrete is going to be taken two, and the maximum for this number here for vs is going to be six screw to v prime c. So that if the section is not really in good shape, I mean, if it's bad, you're not going to be just dumping ties and ties because adding loss of ties is not going to help at this case. You don't need to add any ties if the shear demand itself is kind of low. So what does it mean by low? Low in this case, when the shear demand is going to be less than 50% of the shear strength. In a case like this, you're going to say, well, this can be based on the shear trends for the concrete only. So if the shear demand is so low to be 50% of what the only concrete is gonna be able to take, in a case like this, don't add ties. Concrete is gonna be enough. But if it's gonna be more than 50% of the concrete strength shear, in this case, you need to provide this minimum shear reinforcement. In the minimum shear reinforcement, you have here two equations. And of course, you're going to take the larger of the two. The equation again is simple. It's going to be pace of the concrete strength, width of the web, spacing, and yield trends. Same thing. It's going to be BW, width of the web, spacing, and yield trends of the steam. You can have more than one configuration for the ties. It depends on the beam width. It depends also on how many leg ties that you'd like to add here. We have one example on the shear design. Yes, we have a question here. Yeah, I have a question about the spacing. Doesn't the spacing change? Or is it assuming that's even throughout the beam? It can change. So let's say towards the end of the beam, whenever that you have high shear, you're going to be adding more ties. So the spacing is going to be smaller. When you get close to the middle, you can come to a point at which you're going to say, well, the shear here is going to be equal to zero, shear demand. Am I correct? You know, when you look at the yeah, shear diagram, so yeah, look at the shear diagram. And then one of the conditions that I said here, that when the shear demand is going to be less than 50% of PVC, the concrete strength only, what's going to happen? I said, you don't really need any ties. So let's say on this scale, I'm going to put here, this is to be from this side and also from this side, this is going to be 50% of PVC, meaning the value of the shear demand from here to there. When you compare it, right, this gave you the shear demand here. When you compare it to this value, and how much is this value? I'm going to say here 0.5 PVC. What's going to happen? I'm going to say in this section here, you don't really need to add any ties. You see this area here? 
from this point to that point, you don't need to have any tires. Now think about it this way. When you go towards the end of the beam, you're gonna have higher shear demand. And in this case, you need here to have more tires. So the spaces get smaller. But once you come here to the right side, you're gonna have bigger spacing for the tires. And it could be maybe the largest spacing that you can ever go to. And once you come here to an area at which the shear demand, which means this line, this sloping line, is gonna be within this limit. And how much is this limit? 50% of VVC. You don't really need to have here any tires. In actual practice, I mean, in practice in construction, you provide tires anyways. You know that at certain point here, because the shears get equal to zero, that you don't need any tires at all, right? But you still add some tires. You're gonna be adding the minimum. So what do we use for S then? For S, usually you start by saying, okay, let me use, you need to assume an S, some spacing or you assume the tire. And usually the one that you start with is gonna be the tire size. So you say, in this beam, I'd like to use number three rebar. I say, okay, how many tires? You can say, here's the section. Let me put here one tire like this, give you number three. So how many legs that I'm gonna be cutting through? You say, I cut through one and two. Now my AV is gonna be equal to what? To two times AB. Correct? So I'm going to say here, let me set here this AV, right? I'm going to say it's going to be equal to two times 0 0.11 because now I'm using number three. So it's going to be equal to 0 0.22 square inch. So, okay, good. So now I assume this. VS is going to be equal to the difference between the demand and between the concrete strength, if you like. This is going to be one way of doing it. Another way, assume the spacing. You come here and then you say, let me put the spacing to be, let's say 14 inches. So you have here some assumption for the tie size and the spacing. And with that, you get VS. And then you compare the shear demand to the shear strength. If this is good, great, you're done. If you still need to add more reinforcing, I would keep maybe the tie size to be the same and reduce the spacing. Let's say from 14, you make it 12 inches. So look what happened when you reduce this number. The shear trends is gonna be going up, right? Make sense? Did they answer your question or no? Uh, yeah, I mean, is that just like the you're just assuming a number for S? Or I mean, is that like because you just like saying the, the space first, first yeah, you start with this one. You consider uh, a bar size for the times. This is what usually happens in practice. We would like to keep the bar size, let's say, to be number three or number four. So you start first with number three, and then you put 14 inch for the spacing, right? This is gonna be a good start. If the numbers don't work out with you, reduce this. Let's say, make it all the way down to eight inches. Eight inches is good enough. Don't try to squeeze, don't make it four inch, all right? So we're gonna say here, maybe the smallest is gonna be eight inches, and the smallest here, rebar size, is gonna be number three. If it doesn't work, you're going to be going here with number four, right? And then you put two legs. And then you start to play again with the spacing. If you don't like it, add one more leg. So you can have your three legs, three legs like this. If you go back here to the picture, like in here, for example, here you have four legs. I can have three legs. By just adding one of these ties, I'm going to just make it vertical. All right? Got it, thank you. Okay, no problem. We have one example here on shear trends design for beams. It says determine the shear trends adequacy for the beam section shown. The beam center line to center line span is 22 feet. So usually if anyone is saying the beam span is gonna be center to center and this span is gonna be L that if you like find out the moment for it, you say W, for example, W squared divided by eight. So it says here, center to center span is 22 feet. The beam clear span, not very clear on this, but I'm gonna see it in a second, is 20 feet. Dead load, 1.5 kip per linear foot. Life load, 0.7. Concrete strength, 4,000. Yield strength, 60. Now, do you have ties? I'm gonna say yes, I have ties. Number four at 14. 
How many legs? You can say, well, this is obvious. I have one leg, two legs. It's going to be here resisting the shear. And the spacing is provided to be 14 inch. So now the spacing is given to me and the tie size is going to be given here to me. So I'm going to say, if I want to find out here the cross section area for the ties, I'm going to say this is going to be equal to for number four. I'm going to have here two legs, right? Times. For number four, just one number four, cross section area of 0.2. Therefore, I have total of 0.4 square inches for A sub V. And this gave you equal to A sub V. How about S? In this case, I'm going to say 14 inch. So the problem here says determine the shear strength adequacy, which means determine the shear demand and the shear strength and compare them to each other. See if this section is sufficient to take this shear demand based on this information provided to you. So, okay, let me figure out here the demand. I have dead load of 1.5 kipalina foot and live load is 0.7. I have here some load combinations that I need to use to find out the maximum load, ultimate load. I'm gonna try here 1.4 times the dead load versus 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. 1.2 times this plus 1.6 times that. I have 292. Now, which one controls? Let's say I need to take the larger. It's going to be here my ultimate load. This is going to be 2.92 kip per foot. So, okay, good. So, what's next? This is just the uniform load, applied load. Now, I need to find out the maximum shear that I'm going to be calling here the shear demand. I'm going to say, okay, here's the beam. They say center to center span is 22 feet. Clear span, 20 feet. So let me try to understand this. It's giving from the center, from support to support is 22. Let me look here at the beam elevation. Here's the beam. The column width, my understanding, if this gave be the center to center, and this gave be here 20 feet, it means that I'm going to have here one foot left and one foot to the right. Therefore, the column itself is going to be two feet. So from here to there, this distance, which means the column length is going to be two feet. One foot to the right, one foot to the left. Now the code says the critical section for shear is going to be a D distance away from face of support. Now I need to figure out where is the face of support. Do I need to work on the right side or left side? I'm going to say it doesn't matter because the load is just uniform, 2.92, which is the way I calculate that. Here is the face of support. Support means the column of the beam, right? Column supporting the beam. I'm going to be going here at the distance away from face of support. And this is going to be the critical section for shear. As if I'm taking here a sloping line of one to one, coming from this corner all the way up. Once it hits the top of the beam, I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be my critical section for shear. This question is, at the distance away, like in here, from here to here. The depth is 13 and a half. How would I know this? You can say, let me go back here. You have total depth of the beam is 16. Subtract the cover, subtract the tie, subtract one half the rebar size. You're gonna end up with three, 13 and a half, which means the depth from this point all the way to the top. So you can say this depth here is 13 and a half inch. Okay, good. So distance at 13 and a half inch away from face of support, you're gonna have the critical section for shear. So this is gonna be the location at which I'm gonna be interested in finding out the shear at. So okay. Just clean this up a little bit. Meaning I'm looking for the shear here, this value here. I'm not looking for the shear at the support because shear at support is going to be this reaction. If you take 292 times 22 divided by 2, it's going to get here 32.12. .2, this is going to be the reaction, but this is not the shear demand that you need to design your beam for. You can reduce it a little bit to go at face of support because you know the distance from the center right to here. How much is this distance? I'm going to say this distance equals a foot plus another foot and a fraction, because 13 and a half means one foot, one and a half inch. So let's say roughly about two feet. So at two feet, 
I have a reduction in the shear demand here. And the shear demand, if you know how to do the shear diagram, is going to be equal to 25.9 kips. This is going to be the shear demand that you need to consider in your design. So don't use 32. 32 is going to be quite high. And this is going to be right at the reaction, which means at the center of the support. What you need to do, you need to go the distance away from face of support, find out the shear demand. Any questions on this? Yes? No, sir. Good. All right. Great. Yeah, good. All right. Now I need to find out the strength. The strength here, I'm going to say PVC. I have the steel and I have the concrete. First for the concrete. Phi is 0.75. This is here the phi factor. Now, the concrete strength is going to be based on this equation that says 2 squared to V prime C times the cross section area. So here's the 2 shear factor. The width B is 10 inches. Let me confirm this again. 10 inches for the width, 13 and a half for the depth. That's why it says here 10 times 13 and a half. So what is that? This is going to be the cross section area of the concrete beam. Square root of 4,000 PSI. Right? Divide by a thousand to put it in caps. So the concrete resists, it's just the concrete, resists 12.8 caps. Demand is higher. Look at the demand here, 25, the maximum demand. Right? At that critical section for shear. Someone's going to say, but the shear drops down. I'm going to say yes, but I'm interested in the worst case scenario, which means right at the critical section for shear. So don't take the 30 to 12 which means a reaction, this number here, no. Take the 25.9 at the distance away from face of support again. Now, how about VS? I'm gonna say, let me look at the equation. I'm gonna have here two number four, two legs, number four, like the way I showed it. This is gonna be AV. Yield trends is gonna be 60. Depth, 13 and a half. 14 inches is gonna be the spacing given this problem. So you don't really need to solve for it. And here's VVS. PVS is going to be 17.36. Now add it to the 12.8 to find out the total shear trends. As it says, it's going to be 30 caps, almost. Now compare it with V sub U. How much was V sub U again? 25. So what happened? I have here enough trends. I have 30 caps as a strength, and my demand is 25.9 caps. So this beam is sufficient. It's good. Any questions on the use of these two equations? Good. Yes. All right. Now let's look at this diagram. I'd like to take this diagram here and just enlarge it and let me look at what's happening. Here's the shear diagram. This is going to be at the center of the support. Right? This is going to be the one at face, at the distance away from face of support. So this is going to be my critical section, right? This is going to be this one here. And here's the demand right there. It's going to be 25.9. So we're going to say this is the critical section. For shear. So, okay. It means that all of the shear here is taken by something else. It's taken actually by the column. Look at this area here. This X has to be part of the column. If I may trace it and say, I understand this is the column, right? But this section, what the code says, this part here is going to be working as integral part of the column. So any shear in this section is going to be taken by this column. So this area here is taken away by the column. This is good. So OK. So don't worry about this section here, to the left of this blue triangle. OK. How about PVC? What is taken by the concrete strength? But well, only the concrete. I'm going to say this area here. Look, let me draw here a line for this value. You see this line, this dashed line? This is going to be here, PVC. Meaning all of this is resisted by concrete. 
of this light shading is going to be resisted by concrete. Any shear above this is going to be resisted by steel, which is this blue thing, the blue triangle distribution here. This is going to be taken by the steel because the bottom part is going to be taken by the concrete. If you draw a horizontal line here for one half of PVC, right? So here's your line. Once it meets with the shear demand, what's going to happen? Any shear below this value, which means this light area, you don't really need to put any ties in here. It turned out that this distance is about two feet. So are you going to be asking the people on the side to come here to the middle, just avoid this two feet from this side, two feet from the other side, don't put any ties? I'm going to say no. Most likely, you just tell them, just put the ties because the cost is going to be very, very small. It's going to be minor. You just keep it. So, okay. Am I done here with my design? I'm going to say yes, almost. But I need to check the minimum reinforcement for shear. Why? Because the shear de demand that I have is more than 50% of PVC. So let me take you back here. As it says, you need to have some shear reinforcement when the shear demands give you more than PVC, one half of it. So, okay. My shear demand here is 25.9. Concrete is taking 12. So, yeah, I mean, 25 is more than one half of 12.8. So, it is really important that I need to check the minimum shear. Minimum shear here, 0.75. Square root of the prime C, the 4,000. And the section is going to be BW. It's going to be your 10 inch. Space is 14, 60,000 for the data trends. This is what you need. You need to have here 0.11. Here's the first equation. Now you try the second equation. You need 0.12. You're going to be taking the larger of these two minimums. So I'm going to be using this 0.12. Now, how much do they provide? I'm going to say I provided. A tie is going to be number four, two legs. So here's the AS provided. So this is going to be the provided here. It's going to be 0.4 square inches, more than 0.12. It's good. So the reinforcing I provided here is more than the minimum reinforcement needed for sure. So this is good. Questions? So we need to compare those. We need to compare those two equations. Yeah, you need to compare these two values because you have two minimums. Just imagine that you have two minimums. One of them is higher than the other. So if you come here at the bottom, if your choice is gonna be at the bottom, this is not good because your choice needs to be above the two minimums, right? So when you have usually two minimums, you have equations for two minimums, or sometimes give you three, you take the larger of the three. It's gonna be the largest value and just use it. So in my case here, I have 0.11 and 0.12. This gives you the value I need to use. The provided amount of reinforcement was two number four because I have here two legs. So this gave you 0.4 square inches provided. Needed maximum or minimum needed is gave you 0.12. Just satisfy the code. Are you good? I'm good. All right. So someone's gonna say, how about an actual practice? If I don't have the spacing and I don't have the rebar size, what should I do? So let's say here for a second, I'm gonna go back here, that you don't know it's gonna be number four, you don't know it's gonna be at 14 inch. What would you do? All what you have is just the sheer demand. This is what you start with, correct? Should we solve a quick problem with this? Same problem, just redo it a little bit differently. Yes, no? Yes. All right. Yes. So here's what we have. Information I have, shear demand is 25.9 kips. So keep this value in mind, please. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna put this box. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna say, okay, so what do we have? PVC is gonna be the same. This value here is not gonna change because I don't know the times. It is going to be this value here that I have no idea about, right? I don't know any of that. So this value here, I'm just assuming here for a second that I don't have it. Why? Because I don't know the times. All what I know, I have concrete section, 
my demand is 25.9 kips. So let me write it here. So let me say V sub U equals 25.9 kips. Okay. PVC is equal to, based on the top equation, 12.8 kips. This is not going to change, right? As I said, it's not going to change because I don't know the ties, because concrete dimensions can be the same, strength is going to be the same. So I have that. Are you good with these two values? Do you need to add in reinforcement or we don't? And I hear from you guys. It's clear that you're going to need reinforcement. I need. And yeah, just subtract it and figure out the. Uh... Okay, so I'm going to say here's VU and here's VVC, correct? How much is VU again? 25.5. VVC, 12.8. So I'm off by how much? By this number here, right? 13. So I need 13.1 kit. So what would you call this? I'm going to call this phi VS. Phi VS, not just phi VS. This is not the actual strength. I'm going to say needed. Does it make sense? So phi VS needed, if I may do this for quick. Right. Let's give you here PVS needed. This is how much shear strength I need, right? This is gonna be what? This V sub U demand. So I'm gonna say demand. And this one, concrete strength. This gonna be the needed steel strength. How much is the fee factor again? Can someone remind me? 0.75? I said, okay, this gave you 0.75. How much is VS needed without the fee factor? Only VS needed, how much is that? Would you be able 23. to put Yeah, that. Like 17 kips, right? Of course, everything here is gonna be what? All of these values is giving kips, right? Isn't it 23? This is a VS needed. It's gonna be 13 divided by 0.25. Why 23? Oh, because I was looking at the number on the up here all right because the vs needed the pvs is 13 right so you divide this by 0.75 you get to the vs needed are we good yep okay good all right this is gonna be the vs needed let me look here at this equation equation says gonna be equal to av fyt d divided by s so i'm gonna say okay let me come here and start work on this so I'm going to say VS needed is 14.47. So let me write it here. I'm going to say VS needed. Again, 17.47. Great. This equals to what? I can say this can be equal to AV FYT D divided by S. Do you know this AV or you don't? Do you, anyone knows it? Yeah? I don't because I said I don't have the pi size. I don't have the pi speed. I don't have any of that. So it's going to be AV applied by 60. Correct? So we can say times 60, KSI, times the depth. Do we have the depth? 13 and a half inch divided by S. Am I correct in this equation or what do you guys think? Yeah, you're right. Okay. All right, I guess we're moving the right way. So let me try to see here this equation. So I guess I can say AV divided by S equals, so let me put it this way, AV divided by S equals to what? It's gonna be equal to 17.47 times 
or divide by. You can say times or divide by. Divide by 60, divide by 13 and a half. You guys agree? Yes? Look at the equation. This gave you 17.47 divided by 60, divided by 13 and a half. This gave you 0 0.02. What? What units? You can say this AV divided by S square inch divided by what? Inch. Is this correct? Anything wrong in my equation? Yes, no? I think you're good. You divide by 14 assumption, right? What 14? I don't uh, know the spacing. This is now oh, a new problem. I don't have the spacing. I don't have the bar size. OK. Are you guys good now? Follow me or not really. I can repeat any, any section here if you want to. So the units you use is inches squared over inch? Yeah, because it's going to be AV divided by S. AV is going to be square inches, and S is going to be inch. So at the end, you can call it inch if you want to. OK, that's what I was thinking. OK? Let's just leave it like this for now, for a reason. I want to leave it as is. Like when you write it, let's say you say square inch. On the bottom, you say inch. So OK. Now. I guess I'm done with the calculation and the analysis. I need to pick a spacing and come up with the cross-section area of the rebar. Or I can provide the bar size and come up with the spacing. Make sense? So I'm going to say here, try number three. Do you want to try number three or number four? Let's give you your choice. Number three. three. Number three, OK. How much is AB for number three? A, B equals? 11. 0.11. How many legs would you have? Two legs. Two. So A, V is going to be equal to this number multiplied by two. It's going to be also square inches, right? So this is going to be my A, V that I need to use. So what is spacing would I go with if this is going to be the case? I'm going to say if this is a case, look at this equation here. AV equals 0.22, while AV divided by S is going to be 0.02. So what spacing should I go with? How can I do the calculations? I say Eight. V, yes, divided by this number. So the spacing is 10.2 inch. This is going to be S. Should I go to 12 inch or 10 inch? Ten. 10. You cannot Ten. go really to 12 inches because it means that you're going to be providing less strength. So I'm going to say use 10 inches for the spacing. OK? So I'm going to say, well, I don't like the 10 inch spacing. It's going to be tough, let's say, in our case here. Why don't you use number four? So I'm going to say, OK, try number four. How much is AB and AV? Let me just copy this and just change the numbers, right? AV is how much? AB, 0.2. Now you have 0.4. The spacing now, this S, is going to be equal to the needed or the provided this divided by that. Right? It's going to be how much? 18 inch. Now I can go to spacing of 18 inch. What do you guys think? Should I go to 20 or should I go to 18? Or should I go to 16? 16. So get to 16. 16 is good enough. I have a question here. The question is when you see number four, don't you think that the D the depth of the beam is going to get changed. The depth, the effective depth that we use. So yeah, it is true. It's going to get changed by how much is the change? How much is the difference in your analysis here? You can say difference between number four and number three. What's the diameter of number four? DB for number four. Someone help me here. How big? Zero half. 
can finish. How about for number three? How much? How big? Three eight, which means 0.375. We're gonna say three eight to an inch. Good. How much is the difference now? Look at the difference. It's gonna be 0.125. Do you think that this is gonna impact our numbers here and our analysis? I'm gonna say not really. But if you like to go very exact, if you have a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet is gonna be doing this for you, this is fine. But if I'm doing here quick analysis, just for the sake of discussion and for the academia, so I don't really care. I mean, this is gonna be very small. I can just ignore it for now. As long as I'm showing exactly how to use this equation. So if you're using a calculator, I wouldn't change the depth. I just keep it the same as is. But if I'm using here a spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet is going to be doing the entire beam design for me, and this year check, I'm just going to keep it as is. I'm not going to change it. Any questions? Are we good for the shear design? For the spacing, we didn't go 18 because we should be going to a max of 16 or? Okay. The max spacing is 18.5. So uh -huh. the choices you have can be 18. It cannot be 20. So it's okay if you want to go 16 is okay. You would like to go to 18 is going to be okay. Acceptable. 14 is going to be okay. Any number lower than 18.5 is okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we, oh, okay. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Is there a max for the spacing? The maximum usually is going to be one and a half times the depth. Okay. So if the depth here is going to be 16 or 13 inch, you don't want to go beyond that. But usually people would like to keep max to be 14 to 16 inch. You don't go yeah. beyond this. Yes. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay, let's take five minute break and then we'll come. Are you guys there? Yes. All right, very good. <clears throat> now, what we have done here, that for conventional, concrete beams. Now I'd like to see what does mean by pre-stress beams in this case. So in pre-stress beams, you're going to have one of these two options. Given that you're going to have drape like this, it's going to be hot, like in this case. So what you're doing here, you are balancing some load. And we know how to do this balanced load. So if you like to think about this, you can say, the shear demand, the applied shear demand here is going to get reduced. Why? Because this load here is going to be balancing out the load demand from the top. So let's say that you are balancing the entire dead load. I'm just assuming here, just for sake of discussion. And here you have dead load plus life load. So from the top, you have coming dead load plus life load. From the bottom, you have dead load coming up. Same value. It means that the shear demand is going to be paced on the life load only, or part of the total load, which is good, right? It means the shear demand is going to get reduced if you want to treat it this way. Or someone else is going to say, no, you are not really reducing the shear demand because when you draw here, the shear diagram is going to stay the same. I mean, the shear diagram is not going to change. This is going to be based on the applied load. I'm going to say, fine. So what are you doing in this case? Then you say, actually, once you start to put this compression, you are bringing all the concrete particles together and the shear trends for the concrete is going to get increased. So you can treat it here two ways. So you can say the shear is going to be taken by the concrete. It's going to be equal to the total shear subtracting the pre-stress shear. So the pre-stress shear is going to be equal to W balance multiplied by the total span divided by year by two. If you are going to be coming here to one point, right? So if you are taking it at the distance away from face of support, let's say here, about here, right? It means that you need to reduce this VP to that critical section at the distance away from face of support. So this here explains what's gonna happen. 
you can look at it again in two ways. You can say, I'm going to be reducing the shear demand, or I'm going to be increasing the strength of the concrete in this section. So let's see here, where is the strength of the shear coming from in beams? Generally speaking, if you look here at our equation, if I may take you back here to this one, concrete strength is gonna be based on a shear factor of two. And when you look at this, if you have a T section, you just use BW times the depth. So let me say here, if I assume here that they have here a T section and they have a flange on the top, this flange is not gonna be really doing anything to you when it comes to shear. Because the shear strength is gonna be based on B times, which means a web, BW, multiplied by the depth. Look at the equation again. BW times the depth. This is called here the web shear strength. But when it comes to pre-stressed, if I may move forward here, it's gonna be different because the flexure that you have here, the flexure on the beam, which means a bump in the beam. With having this PT cable, your PT cable is gonna be running this way. This flexure here. Also with the, with the presence of this PT cable, is gonna be increasing the strength at this location. So they start here to draw this beam elevation for you. And then they say, well, here's the sear section is gonna start here at one. It's gonna go here with nearly 45 degrees. And roughly at D over two distance, D over two, one half of the depth distance, you're gonna see here the first flexure crack. Here's gonna be the cracking, right? So at this point here, they are gonna be approaching the cracking moment of the beam. You say, fine. You're gonna see here at this location here, the PT effect with the flexure is gonna be increasing the shear strength. So understood. And you cannot really call it the web shear in this case, but you're gonna be calling what? The flexure shear. Flexure shear strength is gonna be really active in this location. So okay. Let's move here to the next slide set and see what's gonna happen. To give you the same section again, and then we have here the web shear strength, and then we have also the flexure shear strength. We have two values. And these values, the equation that we have is actually based on testing. So let's look here at the testing. Let me just jump here to the slide number six. Based on testing, the flexure shear strength is gonna be equal to this equation. It's gonna be given by this equation. It's gonna be based on the cranking moment, the depth to the pre-stress, M divided by V value. And then you have this additional factor here. Look at this factor. Screw it to the prime C. The shear factor we used to see is equal to two in conventional concrete beams. Now this is gonna be additional section, which means 0.6 BW times DB. And forget about this lambda. This lambda, we don't have it there because usually we just treat it as to be normal concrete weight. Same equation here, look what happened. So you're gonna have this 0.6 plus this cranking moment divided by the maximum moment times VI, and you can figure out what this VI is gonna be the shear that goes with the maximum moment. And then you add this VD to it. I don't wanna take you in depth into this equation and the use of it. And instead, I'm gonna go back here to the second slide and discuss the following with you. Let's give you slide number two. It says here in the code, if this FPE is gonna be lower than 0.4 of FPU, use this detailed design method. But if this FPE is gonna be more than 40% of FPU, you're gonna be using this alternative design method. This method is very simple and this is a method we'd like to use as much as possible. But let me check. Is it true that FPE divided by FPU is more than 40%? Let's give you the question. 
You can say, okay, let me go back to one of this old slide set, which is slide set number five, and see what happens. FPU is equal to 270. This is going to be standard. And FPE is going to be 150 or maybe 155. And in some cases, we go to 160. Okay, sign. So now the question is, are we above 40% of FPU or we are lower? Say, so, okay. Let me try the numbers. Here's FPE. 150. The smallest uses going to be 150. In some cases, we use 160. And then FPU is how much? You see here 270 KSI, right? Let me put units. What is the ratio between the two? The smallest ratio. 0 0.55, 0 0.56. So if I use here 160, I'm going to be roughly 60%. Meaning, I don't really need to worry about this detailed design method because in most cases, I'm going to have here enough pre-stress value and FPE is going to be more than 40%. See, so this is great. You're going to make it here easier, right? So let me look here for the alternative method. So be careful here. It's going to be slide number two. And look what's going to happen. I'm going to be jumping to slide number for the alternative method. Here we go. Slide number 12. Let's look at the equation, try to understand it. This code is PSI code. So let me write this down. Everything is gonna be in PSI. Correct? Remember this, please. So it says that VC, of course, fee factors gave you 0.75. This is gonna be the same fee factor. It's going to be equal to BW times D, which means cross-section area for the beam. And then look at this. Lambda, I understand what is lambda. It's going to be the light weight factor. Why do we have it in this equation and we don't have it in the other equation? Because in conventional concrete, we don't really use this light weight concrete in beams that much. But in pre-stressed, you're going to see it every day. You're going to see this lambda factor. It's going to be very critical, the 0.75 and 0.85. When do you think it's going to be 0.75? When you have all lightweight aggregate, which means the sand is going to be lightweight and the rock is going to be lightweight. But if you have only the rock is going to be lightweight, use 0.85. And you guys are aware of these two values. So it's going to be either 1, 0.85, and 0.75. So let's say... To compare this to the conventional concrete, I'm going to say, let's put here lambda is going to be equal to 1. Why? Just consider normal weight concrete. Normal weight concrete. Just assume it for now. It's going to be equal to 1. This lambda equal to 1.0. So instead of having a factor of 2, now I have here a factor of 0.6. I said, okay, 0.6 is okay. You can say, how about this F prime C? What is the maximum F prime C that you ever can have in a beam? Anyone can help me with this? Screw root of F prime C. What is the maximum screw root of F prime C that you can have in design? 6,000? It is 100 PSI. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the screw root of F prime C. 3,000? Yeah, no, the total thing. Square, square root of F prime C, the total value. Let me try these numbers here for you. Let's say I have here 4,000. What is the square root of 4,000? Oh, 63. So if my maximum is 100, it means my maximum that I ever can use in my analysis is going to be 10,000. Because it's going to give me here 100,000 for the square root of F prime C. So what the code says, and this is not going to be in this class, this is from previous concrete class. Maximum square root of a prime C that you can use gave be 100 PSI. Okay, good. All right. Now let's look at this number here. I don't see here square root of a prime C. And they talk about strength of concrete. So I'm trying to figure out what does it mean by this? This box here. Or this number. This means what? Let me put here an arrow for it. You can say this means seven times 
f prime c to the point five. You can say, wow, this is big number here. So this 700 is really big, correct? So if you have conventional concrete beam, you are gonna have a shear factor of two. Now I have seven square root of a prime C multiplied by this VU DP divided by MU. And they say, usually you, this has to be less than one. So let's say this is about maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.7, even it's gonna be 0 0.5. It means that you have three and a half. If this is gonna be one half, it means effectively you're gonna have three and a half square root of a prime C which is still a big deal because for conventional concrete, we have only two. In the top of that, so regardless of the value of VU and M sub U and DP, you're gonna have here 0.6. I said, okay, this is good. Let me try here. I'd like to see where I'm gonna be at. So what the code says, you're gonna be between two values. You're gonna be between a shear factor of two to shear factor of five. If your analysis shows anything below than two, you just use it as two. It's gonna be like conventional concrete beam, right? Because the pre-stress is helping out. It is not reducing the shear strength. So actually, your minimum is gonna be like any other concrete beam without pre-stressing. And your maximum factor is gonna be equal to five. Now I guess now you understand that the shear strength here is gonna be really increased by the pre-stressing. And this is gonna be your range. Right? And this give you your equation. Now, any questions here? On this alternative method? Yes? Okay. We're good? Is it okay? Let me go back here to this beam. The shear demand here is 59.25.9, right? So what I'd like to do, I wanna take this beam here and try to see what's gonna happen if I'm gonna be using this equation for it, right? If I assume that this beam here is pre-stressed beam, what's gonna happen? What's gonna be the big change? I need to compare like an apple to an apple. So I'm gonna say, let me look here at this equation. This lambda is gonna be equal to one. BW is gonna be 10 inch. DP, I'm gonna say, well, I used to have it as rebars. Now it's gonna be pre-stress. So let me take the rebar out and put pre-stress strands instead. So it's gonna be the same as D, 13 and a half, okay? So let me put my equation here. So I'm gonna say, here's my equation for the same example. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have here BW 10 inch times 13 and a half times. I'm gonna say 0. 0.6 times. This lambda is gonna be one times. Let me enlarge this box so that we can write the whole equation. And then 4,000 to one half. Plus, are you guys following me? I'm trying this equation here for this design example, which is in slide 10-1. It's okay. So we're good at, at this point. And then I'm gonna say here plus 700. Good. It says here VU, how much was VU? Anyone remembers? VU is 25.9. So I'm gonna be using here 25.5. Wow, is this in pounds or in kips? Well, it needs to be in pounds, correct? So I need to multiply by a thousand. Are you guys following me? Yeah. Okay, yes. great. okay good. How about the depth DP? I say it's gonna be 13 and a half. So, okay, good. At the end, what should I divide by? It says M sub U. How can I find here M sub U? This can be the challenge for me, right? Where is the moment demand at this section? You say, can someone help me here with this, guys? 
M sub U at this section is how much? Yes, you know. what? The moment demand at this section. I know the most maximum W squared by, by eight. No, I'm looking for the moment demand here. You say it's gonna be equal to the reaction as if you cut the section right here and then you take the moment for the lift, this left side. So it's gonna be equal to 32.12 times. How much is that distance? Can someone help me here? This distance, 13 and a half divided by 12 times one. This is gonna be 2.125. 2.13 foot, right? This gave me like positive moment subtracting W, the 2.92, applied by the distance 2.13 squared, right? And then this gave you divided by two. You guys follow what I'm doing? I'm taking a section right here and then try to find out the moment for all of these loads. So I have from the bottom, I have this reaction going up, 32.12 times 2.13. This gave me a moment in this direction, clockwise. And then subtract the 292, multiply by this distance, and then multiply by one half of it, because this gave you like concentrated small load like this. This gave you right in the middle. So it's gave you 292 times 213, Again, times two and three divided by two. Now, can someone help me here with this value, please? Professor, uh, I think I missed it, but what was 2.13 stand for? 2.13? Give me the distance from here to there. From here to there. So it's one foot plus. One seven. plus 13 and a half divided by 12. Divide by 12. Oh, right, because the feet. All right. Because this is an inch. It's an inch. Okay, thank you. Give you this distance here. You got 61.79. 61.79. All right, good. What units? Your foot, right? Okay, now let me go back here to my equation. As you can see here, divide by m sub u. Where is m sub u? It's gonna be this number, but this is your kept foot. Let's say this is not gonna work. Kept foot is not gonna work with me. Why? Because it needs to be in pound inch. Everything needs to be in PSI. So you're gonna say, okay, what should I do about this? So number one, multiply by a thousand. So divided by. You're gonna say, okay, this is gonna be divided by. This is gonna be multiplied by a thousand. Now, should I divide by or multiply by when it comes to from foot to inch? Say multiply by 12. Good. So how much is this value at the end, VC? Can someone help me here now with this? And you see here that the thousand can be canceled between these two sides. I owe you another bracket here. Correct? Yeah. Can someone please give me this number? Forty-nine thousand seven hundred pounds. Forty-nine hundred. Can you divide by a thousand, please? Can you divide this by a thousand? It's forty-nine point seven two. Forty-nine point seven. Seven kips. Is this VVC or just VC? This is just VC, right? How about VVC? Take this number here, 49.7, multiply by 0.75, correct? For the fee factor. Now, how much is that? It's 
37.28. Okay, good enough. So now let me compare this with the previous value. You can see what previous value. You can see for the same beam. All what I did, just treat it as to be pre-stress beam. A pre-stress beam. So PVC or PVN total for the concrete only, it used to be 12.8, right? Look what happened to it. How many times? 37, like three times. Beam becomes stronger three times in shear. Look, here's PVC for the same beam. Here, PVC, the same beam. Well, what I did, I've just taken here the rebars out, I put strains instead of it, made it pre-stress. So, wow, this is great. Any questions? Are you guys good? So the, the lambda is always going to be one, or is that going to change? No, it depends on the concrete. And if you like to have some values for it, it's gave you right here. This is a standard lambda that you have taken in concrete one, right? The 0 0.75, 0 0.85, and one. Let me get to it. This will give you right here. Look at this. Normal weight concrete, it's gave you one. You don't see it in the equation. Sand lit lightweight concrete, you take it 0.85. All lightweight, which means a rock and the sand. It is gave one of them to be lightweight, use 0.85. Usually, we'd like to use 0.75. So if we said lightweight, you'd never know. So you don't wanna get stuck when it comes to your design, right? So you just use 0.75, reduce it a little bit. Be a little bit conservative. This patient will come to share. Very good. Questions on shear design? Okay. The rest of the slide set is gonna be only for your reading. So if you like to read this detailed method, go ahead. But for me, like this, we're done. We're done with today's lecture and we're done with this course in terms of covering the material needed. So the material now is covered for this course and you should expect a shear design problem. And it's gonna be using this method that I just did a practice problem on it. And uh, the good thing is it's gonna be recorded, right? Yes. Okay. Any questions yep. before I let you go? Um, I have a question about a couple of lectures back. Sure. Which one? How do we get um, APS? Which um, one? Did get? I don't have it. I'm sorry. I, I just wonder how, how do we get APS? APS? You know I mean? a like APS is the cross section yeah. area to the strands, right? So uh, are you designing a new double T or uh, double T? It's going to be number of strands multiplied by cross section area for one strand only. If it's going to be number, it's going to be half inch, it's going to be 0.153. Okay, so that's just for the, because um, I was just in the block design, that, that's just for the. Um, yeah, the APS is similar to the AS. The pre stress, right? Right, the pre stress, yeah. All right, now uh, a question for you guys. Is anyone here who did not review his midterm yet with me? The, the, the midterm. Yes, I'm one of those people, Professor. I'm here. All right. All right, Oscar. Anyone else? Yeah, that was me. Okay. So I will ask you, please, I'm going to put you here in the weight room. I mean, we're done. So uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to be ending the lecture. And, uh, professor? Yes. So next week we're going to be like a review for the final exam? Yes. Okay. Thank you.